Thank you very much. I am going to be reading from notes as chemo fog is something that's very real. Uh, this week I had a double dose. I was six hours at the Prince of Wales Hospital on Tuesday, having my big mega dose, so six hours. And yesterday I had a, a double shot and it wasn't of alcohol. So I am very drugged up, a bit feeling a bit foggy. So forgive me for looking down. Good morning and thank you to each and every one of you for attending today. You have no idea how much that means to me. I'm humbled by the avalanche of kindness I've received since being diagnosed with rectal cancer back in December, 2021. Someone recently reminded me that people give to people. That's pretty special. I wanna give special thanks to Ivan Kay for giving me this BBG platform. And I also wanna say a special thanks to Professor David Goldstein and Professor Claire Scott, AM, for giving us their valuable time. What I'm going to outline this morning, I believe extends, can everyone be on mute? I'm sort of hearing background noise. What I'm going to outline this morning, I believe also extends to maintaining a healthy business perspective. I'll be keen to get your feedback at the end to see if there's any similarities. From the onset, I want to say when life interrupts you, it's not one size fits all. I'm not here to preach to you. I understand some people on this call are doing it really tough. I respect each person is an individual and their, their way of dealing with something so big may be different to mine and that's okay. I realise that being a sales coach by profession and working to unlock people's potential to become better in pushing through sales has really served me well. Selling requires being resilient, being determined and having a huge amount of self-belief. I reckon these three elements is keeping me alive. People have constantly been asking me, what are you doing to remain so strong, so positive? Stage four rectal cancer is a hell of a lot to deal with. I've recently analyzed my behavior throughout this whole year. I'm just about to enter my 10th month of treatment. And through analyzing this, I've really summarized it into eight slides and that's what I'm gonna share with you. There's no surprise that the key thing throughout my slides is mindset. No big surprise. All right, so let's hope the technology works. I'm a little bit shaky this morning feel quite nervous even though I've done a lot of presenting I've never had to present on something so personal to me. So what are my tips when life suddenly interrupts you? Warren Buffett wrote this incredible quote and it has really sustained me over the last few months. The boat doesn't sink because it is surrounded by water. It sinks because the boat allowed the water to enter. All right, so why is this so fundamental to your health and well-being, in my opinion? This is all my opinion. I have remained quite businesslike with my approach to dealing with this. My beautiful husband of 35 years, his name is Peter, which means rock, 
and he's literally been my rock. He has supported me and as a busy lawyer dealing with complex legal matters for complicated clients, I suppose he's also helped me focused on, keep focusing on the end result, getting better. The rest is a process. If you allow those emotions of fear, uncertainty, doom and gloom to enter your body, you'll sink just like the boat. Keep the water out. From the second you are diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, your life is turned upside down. It is no longer your life. It's endless appointments, blood tests, scans, treatments, then repeat. I'm now entering, as I mentioned, my 10th month. The Prince of Wales Hospital is my office. I do income producing work whilst having chemo. I have a large team with my Rodan and Field skincare business, and I'm talking to my consultants, I'm training, I'm talking to customers. You've got to love technology sometimes, just not all the time, thanks to Optus. I've not allowed my emotions to enter the ship. I focus on what is rather than what if. I repeat, please be careful of your emotions and actions at this very delicate time in your life. Slide two, surround yourself with a really good support team. As the saying goes, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. There is nothing you can do about it, it's factual. Be around loving, positive, uplifting people. And most importantly, the best medical team. Friends and family are not doctors and specialists in oncology or whatever your problem is. You may be confronted with an avalanche of messages and phone calls from well-meaning friends and family. Just because they know someone who went through this doesn't mean they are doctors. One voice, one, a person gave me really good advice who's on this call and he said, listen to one voice. Otherwise it gets very confusing and loud. If you are not happy with your medical team, seek a second opinion. You're not married to them. Trust is a super important word when going through this. I have 110% trust in Professor Goldstein, and I know I am in the very best hands. When with your medical team, listen hard, take notes, ask questions. If unsure, ask again. Always take someone with you that you trust to every medical appointment. It's amazing what you don't hear when you're in shock, when you're in fear mode. Slide three, and this is a really important one. Decide to make a decision to live. I learned about choice through Peter Singer, who's on this call, an incredible mediator. He gave me a lesson on the power of choice. You choose your destiny. You choose it. Decide to make a decision to live. You choose your response to this situation. It comes back to sink or swim. What are your options? Live or die? 
move away from all negativity, stories of other people and their prognosis. Every situation is different. Every experience is different. There are hundreds of cancers. One voice. Slide four, commit to getting better mentally and physically. I mean, look at the wonderful Olivia Newton-John. That's what she did. Create good habits. Find your bliss and follow it. Whatever gives you pleasure, whatever makes you happy, singing, painting, exercise, diet, yoga, whatever it may be, find it and do it. Slide five. And this has been my lifesaver. Find your purpose. To me, Purpose is ideas, conversation, connection, and most importantly, being part of a community of like-minded people. The, the things you speak are the things you'll have in your life. This is what purpose gives you, a reason to get up in the morning. Purpose is a powerful word. And when you peel it back like an onion and get to the core, there's another word, even more important than, in, than purpose. It's called impact. It's really thinking about your strengths and where can you actually lean in and have massive impact. Impact gives you effective direction. You get up in the morning and you run. You run to that purpose. Can you imagine if you can use your time effective and you create something that actually gives you actual evidence of your success? In my case, in the last nine weeks, I've raised over $51,000 with a goal of 100,000. And a lot of that is thanks to you on this call. The power of we, the outpouring of generosity, people giving to people. It's been beyond the course. It's been an outpouring of love to me. And I acknowledge that and I thank you. At a time when I could have gone into paralysis, pulled down the shutters and choose to go the other way, I mobilised my energy to do good. It's a powerful energy which may save my life and definitely is going to help others. To give you context, Professor David Goldstein together with Professor Claire Scott AM, are spearheading my Walter and Eliza Hall Institute Medical Research Fund to focus on rare cancer funding. The $100,000 that will be raised will bring in a researcher to work on rare cancers, specifically gastrointestinal cancers. However, I've been told the whole body will be looked at. These incredible top oncologists are hoping to open the net and speak to leading doctors in the US and Europe to understand their treatment methods. They do not need to reinvent the wheel. I realized I needed to do something brave when Professor Goldstein said, I wonder if you remember this professor. Odeal. I have 10 oncologists in a room shaking their heads. They're not sure what to do with you. My heart sank. Odeal. We need more information and research. We have nothing on your cancer. It's so rare. Forget Google. It's not there. The cost of one clinical trial 
is $3,000 per person. It's a lot of dough, hey? It's not cheap. It's not a sexy cancer like breast and bowel that gets millions of funding. It's now estimated that one in four people that get cancer are gonna get a rare cancer. We are asking each and every one of you who has capacity to give, to give more. If you've already given, I'm thanking you from the bottom of my heart. Um, so start slide six. I was incorrectly diagnosed three times. I lost nine months. Nine months is a long time when you've got a cancer sitting inside of you in your rectum. I was very, very angry at the beginning when I was diagnosed. Let it go. Whatever is holding you back, anger, bitterness, pain, ne negativity, let it go. It's not going to help you recovery. I'm a very big believer in pain man management. Right from the beginning, seek pain management. I had excruciating pain during my 30 radiotherapy sessions. My internal linings of my bowel, my vagina, my rectum, my anus were all burnt. Most afternoons after radiotherapy, I was in fetal position on the couch in agony. Once pain was under control, I was like a different person. I'm nearly finished. Slide seven. What is your vision for your life beyond being unwell? I learned this through my Rodan and Fields journey that the importance of having a vision board. I have, this is only one. I actually have four. I've broken it up into categories and I think it's really useful. So you can have family and friends, community service, financial goals, health and fitness, professional career, things you want to buy, adventure, travel. There's probably a lot of categories you can choose from, but I have in my office now a massive board. I have four different categories and I look at it all day. And it keeps me going. That's my future. Finally, any illness is a mind game, just as much as it's a physical endurance. I may have cancer, but cancer doesn't have me. Don't let your illness own you. Commit to smiling and being happy. And I... No, for some people, this is not possible. But when you when are there when there are those moments when you when you're with your family, when you're with your friends, don't be miserable. Be happy that you've got those moments. They're precious. You're gonna have bad days, accept them. There has been days when I've closed my door, Peter's upstairs working. He's got no idea, and that tissue box is getting a real workout. It's okay. There's one quote I want to finish with, and then I hope I've left you with enough to give you some food for thought. We all have two lives. The second one begins the day you realize you only have one. Thank you.